All right. Well, today you're joining me for a video, but first I'm in the building at my buddy Storrs' cars, uh, also owned by the Kool-Aid man, as you can see by the wall there. Um, there's some cool collector cars in here, a couple race cars. I'm here to pick up a trailer so I can get this, this dune buggy my other buddy bought uh, out in Clinton, Iowa. So uh, this video is going to be about me getting my electric Ford Lightning uh, trailing for the first time and keeping it charged uh, on this long journey through what I consider a charging desert. Between here and Clinton, Iowa, the only charging station, what I would consider fast charging, is still pretty slow. It's 50 kilowatts. Uh, just check out this building. This is a car elevator and uh, my other buddy who owns this place, he's planning on restoring it and getting it up to speed and that elevator shaft is pretty cool, but uh, it's going to be a lot of work and a lot of investment, of course, to get it there. Um, other things uh, I like about this building, it's just a cool old storage building, uh, very secure from the outside. You'd never know this stuff's in here. And picking up this car today is a theme I've had this week. Earlier this week, I got a uh, three-wheeler trike picked up for another buddy uh, just in the northern suburbs near Fox Lake, Illinois. So, Thank you. truck's getting some work this week, and there'll be more of it coming later as well. This is a diesel, or was? I have no idea. It says Bellet Diesel. Wow. Uh, it's got a carburetor. Hmm. Weird. I raced that one before. At Road America. Uh, it's gonna be a long day uh, in the cold temperatures and uh, towing and so on. So stick with me and we'll see how things go. We're sitting here in traffic now is a good time to update you on the plan i'm here in chicago i'm gonna head westbound stop at the bank and there's a meyer uh, electrify america station right next to it so i'm gonna do a little bit of charging i'll only be down to maybe 90 percent by the time i get there so i won't be getting much but let's say i leave here at 100 percent i need to head over here to clinton iowa and of course a gas car would just take this route down i think that's 88 and then over to there's a small highway here across the mississippi but i'm not at a gas car i'm i'm an electric truck so it's routing me up to here where there's a i hesitate to say decent charger the last i checked on plug share this was a bad bad charger so i don't know if i want to even bother considering that one i'm going to keep going this way i think i'm going to go the normal gas car route uh, i should be able to make it well, we'll see. I hope to be able to make it here uh, to Clinton, Iowa on this one charge at 100%. Uh, for those that don't know, the Lightning long range like I have, the extended range, has a normal range of 320 miles and I'm going about 150 miles, I think it is, uh, but towing, of course, so that hurts the range. If I can get to here, pick up that dune buggy, then I can hopefully go to a dealership right next uh, to the the place I'm picking up the buggy and charge there at 50 kilowatts at a, at a GMC dealership. 50 kilowatts isn't that great, but I'll definitely take it and it's better than nothing. Meanwhile, I can uh, check out the car a little bit more and, and give my buddy some updates and do some filming for you guys. So that's the plan is to get here, do a little bit of charging, take some time there, just chill for a bit at the dealership and then head back. If I need to, there's another dealership at 50 kilowatts right around here. I think it's another GM dealership. And then if I need uh, this, pull the parachute cord, I can pull the parachute cord right here, charge again in Dixon, Illinois, 
and then all the way back to Chicagoland. That's the plan. It's a cliche to talk about this with an EV pickup truck towing a trailer, but the consumption's been a little worse than I expected, even already. I'm going at relatively low speeds here, 38 miles an hour, and uh, the consumption's only 1.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, you're probably thinking, yeah, just wait till you get up to highway speeds. Out of the traffic and actually just went up to 1.8 a second ago. Now it's down to 1.7 again. So it has improved a little bit at higher speeds. There we go. It's right on the edge of 1.8, which makes sense now that I've been able to turn the heater down, the car's warmed up and I don't need as much heat on the seat. So a little better than I originally reported. Have you all ever heard of a diverging diamond interchange? Well, here's one right here. There's a few of them around, but as you can see, we're traveling on the left-hand side of the bridge and oncoming traffic is to our right, which is pretty unusual unless you're in, say, Japan or England or something, but these intersections are used for high traffic locations around Illinois when they're reconstructing the bridge or intersection anyway. It's a good opportunity to implement these. They're uh, safer and more efficient. Uh, there's less time for cars spent at stoplights throughout, but I agree it'd probably be a little confusing if it's your first time going through one of these, but it's not, it's not that bad. You can see here you'd come up from the south, uh, from the north in this case, swing to the left, go along the wrong side of the bridge on the overpass, and then swing back to the right again and continue on. But uh, it just eliminates some stop traffic and some unnecessary stop lights and signage and things like that. So pretty cool, I love these. And uh, if there's one near you, you should check it out. All right, connecting the vehicle. I'm applying, I'm trying plug and charge for the first time. I just signed up for it so I could get the free charger adapter for Tesla from Ford. And I gotta say, plug and charge worked great. Very first time, looks like. I don't hear the click yet, but it's going all right so far. Come on, you can do it. It's showing blue on here, but I think that's just saying that it's getting some sort of tiny charge. Come on. Wow. All right. Credit to Ford and Electrify America. Worked great the first time, very low effort. Thanks guys. All right, now I'm gonna head to the bank, get my cash, and be on my way here shortly. We're getting 49 kilowatts, of course, but that's normal for, oh, I spoke too soon. I spoke too soon, oh boy. Let's see if this works with the credit card. I don't really care. I don't really care how I pay. I just want to get some money or get some charge. Uh-huh. All right, let me get my phone. Did it on the app this time. I just plugged it in. When it turned blue, I initiated charging on the uh, app, trying to beat the trying to beat the plug and charge from happening. And it's going through a couple of cycles here. I'm not sure this is gonna work. Maybe I'll just have to disconnect plug and charge and disable it and then just continue on without it. Cause Electrify America usually works okay. I mean, you know, okay for Electrify America for me, but this one's not so successful. While we're waiting, you can check out the pretty decent setup here for towing if uh, you can get this number four station here. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm trying the other plug on the same charger. Just trying to create a new variable, so hopefully something works. But as usual, I'm disappointed in how long this can take. Let's see how it goes this time. Right now it's not even lit up which is, I guess, mildly concerning, but 
I'll start initiating it. All right, unplug, fine. I'll unplug. And of course, now the app. Of course, now the app is frozen. How do I get out of this? Oh my gosh. Close everything. EV. Electrify America. Number four. Swipe to start. You can do it. I have faith in you. I hear some clicking and whirring, but it keeps doing this over and over again. I guess maybe next I'll try one of these stations down here, or just forget it and keep going. This was supposed to be a quick charge while I hop to the bank and it's not turning out that way. All right, I got to the screen where it says continue, so I'm continuing. I hear a click. Yeah. Okay, forget it. This guy in the Volkswagen's leaving, so I'm gonna try that one. Maybe I'll have better luck with that one. Ooh, garbage can, that's nice. All right, let's see how long it lasts. Dear Lord. All right, I went to the app and turned off plug and charge. So let's try this again. Plugging in, going to my Electrify America app, initiate at station four. Nope, station one. Well, all the time I earned by getting to the trailer pickup early, I've just lost by wasting it here. Pretty discouraging. Let's see how long this lasts. Oh my gosh, I am done. That's it, I'm out of here. It's worth noting that my Tesla adapter from A to Z in Montreal, Canada is on its way and my truck here got the update for Tesla plug-in charge two nights ago, so just a few more days and I'll be over there. But I am so done with this Electrify America station, I am out of here. Well, as you saw, no successful charge at EA, so thanks for nothing there. Um, luckily, my consumption's pretty decent. I'm still at 1.8 after some city driving here looking for chargers, so if there's uh, some silver lining, I guess my consumption's not as bad as it could be. I'm going to press on. I'm going to go to the 50 kilowatt charger in Dixon, Illinois. It's at a car dealership, like I said. 
It's not because I need the charge there. I'm still pretty good. I'm at about 90%, but I want to charge up a little bit there uh, just because I can. And also I want to test it so that on the way back, I can see if I need to rely on this one and can, or if I have to do something else more creative to get home. But uh, I was hoping with this stop at EA to get from 90 to 100, I would be able to make it to Clinton and back to EA um, by hypermiling and just being really cautious. But was not to be, and I don't think I'll make it now. So I'll have to uh, charge somewhere else now at a slower rate at 50 kilowatts, but that's okay, we'll figure it out. Back through the diverging diamond interchange. You can see it from the other direction, but more importantly, from another use case where I'm now getting onto the highway from here. Cross over to the wrong side of the overpass, and then we just hang a left, and note there is no light here. We did just cross through one light, but if this was a normal intersection, I would have had to go through two lights. One back there for the people turning crossed in front of me, and then one again here for me to cross in front of other people. Instead, I just go through one light, so there's one use case example of how this reduces lights, increases efficiency, and reduces the chance of an oncoming collision, which is nice. Just wanted to let you know that the uh, co-pilot assist, which is uh, basically active lane keeping assist, it works great while towing. Uh, I know the brochure says that and that it's active even while towing if you want it to be, but I just thought I'd point that out so that you guys now know too. It works great. You can tell uh, once I get back into my own lane here. You can tell that this green light and this green light are on. And if I take my hands off the wheel briefly, it will steer itself. Um, but of course it will nag me to put my hands back on the wheel at some point every so often to check in. All right, before I started hypermiling, I'm at 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour. So I'm gonna set the uh, adaptive cruise control to keep a safe distance behind this truck and I'll see if it improves at all. I've got some city driving in there, which tends to help the mileage, um, but now I'm driving at higher speeds, which hurts the mileage, and then maybe getting a, a slight whiff of a draft off this truck uh, will hopefully uh, help it again. So we'll see what it changes from 1.7 upwards. All right, so I stopped here in Dixon, Illinois at the GMC dealer and they have a 50 kilowatt EV Connect uh, ABB unit. So I've been charging here for a while. It's working great. It was reliable work the first try. I'm just happy to get some juice in this thing. So thank you EV Connect and the GMC dealership. I'll show you the name in a sec. But uh, pretty good setup for towing. I was worried about this door being blocked if it's a service uh, vehicle entrance, but no one seems to be using that door. So I'm good for now. And I've been talking with the very friendly staff here about my GMC Denali EV truck reservation and talking to them about the Hummers here. And so uh, really friendly staff here if you're interested in buying a GMC product or Cadillac product. They have lots of lyrics as well. I really like the Hummer EV pickup, but this one's sold and way out of my price range anyway. Man, that thing's nice. They said they sold a Moonstone Gray, I think is the color, Moonstone Gray Hummer EV SUV uh, a couple weeks ago, apparently to a guy that lost a bet and had to buy it, apparently, I don't know. I think he bet his daughter and he had to buy it for her. This one sold as well, this Lyric, but man, I really like the Cadillac logo on the back of the console there. That is nice. Great looking car. SUV is great looking. I would not get black with black wheels, that's for sure. But I can see the appeal for a lot of people, just not for me. Let me show you inside real quick. There's something you guys should see. Ken Nelson Buick GMC and Cadillac in Dixon, Illinois.
picked up the dune buggy. I ended up not charging anywhere in Sterling. Um, sorry, in Clinton. Uh, it just didn't work out timing wise. So I just picked up a car and I'm headed back now. I'm back in Morrison, Illinois. I will have to stop again at the GMC dealership I was at earlier. The dune buggy is, as you've seen, on the trailer. It's behaving nicely, hanging out back there. So things are going according to plan. I'll update you later if anything happens, but uh, next time you see me, you'll probably just be uh, watching me at the GMC dealership. All right, just pulling away from the last charging stop back at the GMC dealership I was at earlier. Uh, I added uh, 46 kilowatt hours, went from like, I don't know, 30% to 63%. It's gonna be a little close getting home, but I was waiting here for an hour, that's long enough, so. All right, update time. Yeah, I left the last charger too early. I should have stuck around a little longer. So I can't quite make it back to Chicago. You can see my shrinking range ring here. Um, it's uh, it's gonna be a little longer before I get home. I gotta charge here at another 50 kilowatt charger at a Hyundai dealership. Hopefully it works. Um, it was mixed reviews on the PlugShare app. But I'm going to stop there, do, I don't know, hopefully just 20 minutes of charging or something like that and get back to Chicago, hopefully. So a uh, bit of a long afternoon here. This headwind is killing me and uh, the colder temperatures now are also not helping either. But uh, that's what happens when you travel in a charging desert. It's, uh, it's not easy to find fast charging, so you kind of graze along the way here and there and that's what I'm doing. So. Anyway, still a good trip. The uh, buggy's doing well on the trailer. The trailer's doing well too, and so is the truck. I love driving this truck, despite all this charging rigmarole. Um, it's a great truck, so I'll check in with you guys soon. All right, last charging update, I hope. Uh, with about 15 miles of range left, I stopped by the Nissan dealership behind me, and they had a Nissan Aria, that new EV thing charging, which is fine, it's their dealership and it's their charger, so it makes sense. Thankfully, the sister dealership next door, it's a Hyundai dealership, they had a charge point out front, which was also blocked by cars. These were just blocked by regular gas cars that the dealership had on display. Also, their prerogative, that's fine too, but a helpful salesperson let me know that there's a charger in the back as well. So I'm charging there, uh, as you can see, at 52.9 kilowatts, slightly faster than I was doing back at the GMC dealership. So at least there's that uh, benefit. So I'm hopefully, I'm hoping that maybe in, I don't know, 20 minutes I'll be back on the road and I'll just want to barely make it back to Chicago. Um, and then I can charge for cheap at home or free at my local police station. So I'll let you know when I'm headed out here, but uh, thankfully things are going fairly well. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous when the car was telling me I need to go up, way up north to Rockford to charge at Electrify America way up here um, and then go back home. And I was like, no thanks. So I'll be patient, I'll charge a little longer and be on my way. Oh geez, sorry for the wind. It's gonna be bad with the wind. So I'm trying to keep the camera close to me and my mouth fa facing the mic. So I apologize for that. 37%, so just wanted to get a shot of this rig. It'll probably be the last daylight shot I have of it. But check this out. It's looking righteous. I wish it got dirtier. I drove through a little bit of dirt and mud today. Nothing too bad, of course, but it looks like it's been put to a little work today. Uh, the truck tows great, like everyone has said. Uh, who tows with the lightning? The truck uh, tows awesome. Uh, it's just
just as everyone else also says, it's just the charging and range. And I know I was charging, uh, driving into a charging desert, so no surprise there. It was hard to find charging, but it was basically a four-hour round trip with only 50 kilowatt charging. Uh, that's pretty unusual in the eastern half of the United States, certainly east of the Mississippi. It's pretty rare. Normally, you don't have four hours of only 50 kilowatt charging even these days, but it'll just get better with Tesla charging. That's coming soon uh, in Rochelle, Illinois. Once I get charging access there, this trip would have taken probably two hours less than it did. I'm guessing I'm going to be at around eight hours for this trip. So can't wait for my adapter and Tesla, oh, sorry, Tesla charging to arrive, but that's it for me for now. And uh, we'll talk to y'all soon when I get back home and unload this thing. So long. All right, just a couple miles to go, but we're back in Chicago. As you can see, I have about 13 miles of range to spare, so I timed that last charge pretty decently. Um, it's been a day. I left this area around 9 a.m. this morning. It's 7.20 now. Uh, I did stop for a few hours for various unrelated uh, things, um, not related to the trip, so not, look at these guys. This drives me crazy. Um, so it not wasn't all driving. I would say two and a half hours could be removed uh, from that. So uh, call it five o'clock arrival. So that'd be like, yeah, still eight hours. Wow, it's a long day. So not for the faint of heart towing with an EV, especially through a charging desert. Uh, but like I uh, looked up, the Tesla charger in Rochelle, Illinois at 250 kilowatt capability would drastically change this trip uh, next time, as would warmer temperatures, but I can't control that. So looking forward to the next time I tow, maybe somewhere with more of charging infrastructure with higher speeds of charging, but still a fun trip. It was fun to tow with this vehicle for the first time. Uh, hadn't towed anything in a while, so that was nice and uh, fun to pick up this buggy for a buddy of mine. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the Mind of Matter YouTube channel for more videos like this as we do more road trips in the Lightning and modify it, put 35s on it. I promise that's coming the next month or two, uh, putting 35s on it, do some off-roading this uh, spring and summer and uh, stay tuned for things like that. Thanks for watching. Talk to y'all soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, as you just saw, we unloaded the buggy at its new home at my buddy's house. And here's the final tally for the day. 365 miles, 10 hours of travel. I mean, not all of it was travel, but it was a 10 hour day. And 1.3 miles per kilowatt hour, a little lower than I was expecting and lower than we started out with. But the headwinds coming home hurt us, the dropping temperatures, and of course, the poor aerodynamics of a beach buggy on the back of my trailer uh, didn't hurt, uh, didn't help things at all either. So pretty good day though. We got everything done. The truck performed flawlessly. Uh, got to get the charging network uh, better. But uh, other than that, very, very happy with the lightning. And yet again, proving this is my super truck. I love this thing. So thanks for watching the Mighty Matter YouTube channel. Subscribe for more videos coming soon.